Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. The boys just announced the next new series called The Boys Mexico. So I'll explain what's going on, how it connects with The Boys Season 4, Season 5, along with Gen V Season 2. Homelander sure is going to be busy having to fly all over the place just to laser people to death and squish them like bugs. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. Of course, I will do episode videos for it when it does premiere, probably around 2025, maybe 2026 at the rate that they're going. So really, this would be taking place after like The Boys Season 5. But you probably saw the news in your feeds recently. The Boys Mexico is like the next new series to come from the main show. Eric Kripke and the people from the main show are working with Diego Luna, who most of you remember from somewhere. He's been in a bunch of stuff, but most people remember him more recently from Star Wars Andor. I believe they're releasing Andor Season 2 next year. And Gail Garcia Bernal, who is Marvel's werewolf by night at the moment. They're supposed to star in the series, but they didn't say who their characters would be. And because they're going to be producing it, they might just be background characters. They might not be main characters. Also, the fact that Bernal is in it makes it sound like Marvel isn't going to be doing werewolf by night anytime soon. The original boys comic book that this is based on didn't run that long. There are still a ton of characters from the comic book that they have not featured on the TV shows yet. Like there's a version of Spider-Man from the boys comic book that they're finally going to be doing during the boys season four called Web Weaver. So there's still a lot, a lot of major Marvel and DC characters that they can parody on all these different boys spinoff series. Like the Gen V series are mostly based on X-Men characters. But because this is largely going to be taking place in Mexico, the original boys comic book does not travel to Mexico that much. Like, it's not really referenced that much. There are a couple international places they travel in the comics. Like, on the TV show, they adapted some of that during the boys season 3 when they found Jensen Ackles' soldier boy character that was being held captive in Russia, being experimented on by Soviets, then eventually the Russians after the fall of the Soviet Union. In the comics, there was a large stash of superheroes that was hiding out in Russia. But generally, all this stuff that they're doing in Mexico seems pretty fresh. So it seems like a lot of the stuff that they'll be either borrowing from other parts of the comic book and just changing it so that it's happening in Mexico or just creating a bunch of new characters. They also did that for the Gen V TV show. Like, it's loosely based on the G-Men from the original Boys comic book, but they wanted to make the TV series a little younger skewing, like more of a YA type of series. So they gave it the college setting to be more of a parody of the classic X-Men movies with Professor X's school for gifted youngsters with the twist that because this is Vought who runs the school and they're super evil, the school doesn't admit kids so that they can learn to be better superheroes or learn to even make more money. It admits them to the school so that it can study them. It only admits students who are either high profile enough to help them raise more money for Vought or they have powers that are unique enough or powerful enough that Vought wants to try and replicate them or use their powers for some sinister purpose. Mostly that purpose just boils back to them making more money for Vought the company. Whatever it takes to make another dollar for the company. Anything to boost that share price. So you can guess the basic premise of The Boys in Mexico is that Vought probably has international arms of the company that manage superheroes in other countries, like Homelander spent a lot of time outside the U.S. during conflicts in the East. Turns out, though, he was responsible for a lot of that. That was all part of their early storyline with them trying to get superheroes in the military, and Homelander was secretly giving Compound V to terrorists using A-Train to run it across the country, literally run it across the country so that it would create a panic in the military, the government, and they would allow bots superheroes in the military. But then they kind of got off on that plan and they got on to the temporary Compound V plan because that was way more efficient for them. Way easier to make money on this temporary Compound V. But here's the thing with Vought having a lot of testing labs, a lot of facilities in Mexico. Up to this point, like the boys season four, Vought previously had controlled all Compound V and all superheroes, keeping them for the most part within the United States. There are a couple exceptions, like United States superheroes traveling internationally. Earlier on the series, we saw some of Vought's United States hidden testing facilities where they would stash superheroes or just experiment on them. We'll probably learn during the Boys Mexico series that there are way bigger, way worse ones in Mexico because the laws are way easier on companies like Vought. Also, they're probably exploiting cheap labor down there because Vought would do something like that. There are a lot of real-life evil companies that do stuff like that. And Vought might just be using Mexican citizens as cannon fodder for their experiments. But because it is meant to be a superhero TV show or a parody of a superhero TV show, there are probably going to be a couple Mexican superheroes rising out of that that survive the process. And also maybe some superheroes down there that got their Compound V on the black market and have just been trying to stay off of Vought's radar this whole time. So that they don't send Homelander in to laser all of them like they did at the end of the Gen V show. 
Homelander is like Vought's break glass in case of emergency kind of contingency plan. Like, if things get too bad, just call in Homelander and just have him laser stuff, squish stuff, step on stuff, do anything just to get rid of problems. Laser all your problems away. But unlike the Gen V show, we don't know quite as much about the actual Boys Mexico plot. Like, what will they actually be doing during the show? Like, what's the overarching mystery on Gen V that was basically the woods? Like, learning about the woods that they exist, then dealing with the massive breakout and chaos caused by it. The only major Hispanic superheroes that we've seen on the boys so far that I can think of are Supersonic, who got squished by Homelander, may he rest in peace, and maybe Blue Hawk. Technically, this would be the third spinoff because they did the Boys Diabolical Anthology series first. If you haven't seen that, I would recommend checking it out. It's actually pretty solid. Some of the episodes are canon to the Boys main series. Some of them are not canon, making Gen V the second spinoff that they did. They did confirm that Gen V is going to get a season two. They're working on it now. It's going to be called Sophomore Year, unofficially. And Eric Kripke, the showrunner for The Boys' main show, said that it will run past five seasons. Originally, he had a five-year plan. He said that he had to rewrite his ending because he decided to push it way past that. I'm guessing if they're lucky, they'll make it to, like, season seven. We'll see. But let me know in the comments, if they're going to be doing a completely separate storyline down in Mexico, what do you want Vought and other superheroes to be doing during the events of the series? Like, what do you want the actual mystery to be? Generally, it usually flows from Vought exploiting people, and generally one of the major differences, especially one of the reasons why companies go to Mexico, is because the laws are way looser on what companies can do and get away with. My only real concern with all these boys' spinoffs that they've been announcing is that hopefully they don't get to the point where they turn into the thing that they're parodying. Like, the boys is meant to be a direct parody of Marvel, DC, like everything they're doing, all the Marvel Phase 4 stuff people have been clowning on for a while. The whole idea that Marvel has been doing spin-off series for, like, anybody and everybody. Everybody gets a series, like Oprah is just giving away series for every single character from the comics. In no joke, right after Disney Plus launched a couple years ago, the boys released a funny in-universe promo for Vought Plus clowning on that. Like, here's all the giant glut of content that you probably don't care about, but we're going to provide. Plus. 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 Sign up now. So we haven't quite got there with all the boys spinoffs yet, but hopefully we don't get to the point where there's like five or six or seven spinoffs. I don't think that it can sustain that many different spinoffs before it turns into the thing that it is parodying. We have been pretty lucky with the boys spinoff so far. They've been pretty solid. Like Gen V was solid. The boys Diabolical was pretty solid. Hopefully the boys Mexico series is also just as good. But let me know in the comments if there's any other boys spinoffs potentially that they do. What do you want them to do based on the original comics? I'll do more videos for the series as soon as we start getting some more teasers. It'll probably be a little while though, but we should get a Boys Season 4 trailer this weekend, which is why I think they actually released the news about the Boys Mexico spinoff, because they're doing this big Boys Season 4 panel this weekend. Whatever they wind up dropping, of course I will do a video for it. It should be Sunday, I think. I'm not sure. It'll be sometime this weekend. This scene is of Homelander at a rally, and based on the Butcher teaser, this actually looks like it's them winning the election. Victoria Newman and Robert Singer winning the election and superheroes getting into the White House. The look on Homelander's face basically makes it seem like he feels metaphorically invincible, like literally he's meant to feel invincible, because as far as we know, there's nothing on the planet that could actually hurt him in a really dangerous kind of way. Like, people have gotten close to it, they may seem like they could potentially hurt him, but he's never really been hurt. Like, for instance, Maeve shoved the pencil in his ear, he's already healed that damage, like that's how quickly he heals. Maybe, maybe Victoria Newman's Compound V virus will be able to affect him in some way, but I don't think that it will be. I think that's the whole idea. Like, they want to make it seem like it's dangerous to all these superheroes, but he's meant to be so powerful that it won't affect him. Or at least affect him in the same way. So he'll basically be like, fine, there's nothing you can do to stop me. Like, you tried to out me as this terrible person with the video of the plane. The Butcher teaser that they released seems like him standing around in the aftermath of this election night party with his side basically losing, like, Victoria Newman gets into office. I say the other side, technically Homelander doesn't really like Victoria Newman, but the whole idea is that she used to be doing this, like this whole campaign push was to get Vought's superheroes in the White House to get control of the White House. She kind of went rogue on the plan at the end, like she made an alliance with Homelander against Stan Edgar, so even though they don't really like each other, they made an alliance temporarily so that she can win the White House. I think the whole idea is she's going to try to use this Compound V superhero virus to get out from under his thumb, so to speak, like somehow break away from Homelander. Some of the other Homelander scenes at the end of Gen V were meant to set up the beginning of Season 4. Like I said, it's going to take place like days after the end of the Gen V finale. 
basically him cleaning up that mess at the university, but I'm wondering if any of the Gen V characters will show up during The Boys Season 4. Like, there's already so much going on, so we might not see most of them until Gen V Season 2. There are a couple new characters that we've learned about. I already talked about Tech Knight during my Gen V episodes. He's still alive, still loving all the holes that he can find, sticking it in every single hole that he can get his hands on. We know that Jeffrey Dean Morgan is going to be playing a brand new character. He's working with Butcher here, so I'm guessing that he's part of the government or part of some black ops agency, and that's how he gets into the story. Make sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of that. Click here for that Boys Season 4 trailer video. I'll update the link as soon as I post that, and click here for all my other Boys videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.